Hello, I'm Oliver and this is Deep Cuts, a channel dedicated to music for lovers of music. Okay, so pretty much since this channel started, I have had comments and messages begging me to cover Vaporwave in some capacity on a video. Um, it's, it's a genre, a micro genre, whatever you want to call it, that a lot of people find great fascination in. Now I didn't want to do a five albums video because I think one, that largely misses the point of Vaporwave as a genre and as an idea, and also I think there are far more interesting cultural implications to discuss about this form of music, you know, why it's cropped up in our modern age. This is a discussion video, I want to talk about some of the approaches to thinking about Vaporwave as an idea and I want us to continue that conversation in the comments sections as we have before. So once you've watched this video, please chuck your thoughts down in the comments section below so we can get some conversations going. I know for a fact that some of you have some very aggressive opinions on Vaporwave, so this should be fun. So Vaporwave. What is it? For those of you out of the loop, Vaporwave initially began as a type of plunder phonics movement, taking smooth jazz, funk, soul, and new age music from the 80s and 90s, and slowing the tracks down to create this pulsing, ethereal atmosphere. Although taking tracks and slowing them down was the basis for this movement of music, uh, producers and musicians took that idea and then started building their own compositions, but the compositions were very much built around the framework and the sonic traits of that slowed down music. So you had the, the slow pulsing beats, the synth tones, the melancholic atmosphere that was being generated but in original compositional songwriting. As many cultural theorists and critics have pointed out, often the best way of looking at a type of music is through its phenomenology, which is how we as humans experience it, how the music makes us feel. Some have called Vaporwave's sonic identity hypnagogic, uh, which refers to the state of transition between being awake and being asleep. And I think if you listen to artists like Macintosh Plus, 2814, uh, Echo Jams Volume 1, which was Daniel Lopatin's project, which pretty much birthed the genre. I think you can feel that atmosphere being evoked. Along with this sonic development came a fascination with not just the music from these time periods, but also the cultural artifacts too, and they're really manifested in the visual representation of Vaporwave. I'm talking about 80s and 90s subcultural references to films and games very specifically. Um, Roman architecture and busts, they come up all the time in this Vaporwave aesthetic. Uh, where Japanese culture comes up, tropical landscapes like palm trees, the outrun games, glitch art visuals, things like operating system sound effects, cheesy advertising, television, now outdated consumer electronics. These are the aesthetics of Vaporwave as an idea and as a movement. Um, and that word aesthetics is very important to our conversation. The word aesthetics often spaced out in full width like this, I'm gonna show you on screen. This is very important to identifying this culture of Vaporwave and also to begin our discussion or argument. So there are broadly two views I'm going to look at when it comes to discussing Vaporwave as a genre, a cultural movement, whatever you want to call it. Number one, the genre is crucial to both understanding and critiquing our own late stage capitalist and haunted society. We'll get onto this a little bit more in a second. Number two, it's an internet meme. We'll go into number one first. There are swathes of critics and theorists who have taken to analysing Vaporwave in the context of helping it to understand the position of modern culture. It's already clear through the aesthetics of Vaporwave that it has a fascination for the retro, the artifacts of the 80s and 90s, and these artifacts, along with the music, build up a vision of nostalgia for the past. We can go further with this, though, to help understand it a little bit more. The philosopher Jacques Derrida coined the term hauntology in the 1990s, and with this term, he was referring to a dislocation in temporality. Something from the past returns to the present, but in a very spectre-like way. It's sort of haunts the present. The reason it's like a haunting is because things cannot technically come back from the dead, right, if you look at it in that way. And if they do return, it's in a way that breaks temporality. You know, if it can come back, then how can it solely belong to the past? It's like anything that returns from a bygone age. It can never exist in exactly the same way because our view of it is being informed by the fact that it belonged in the past originally. If you look at fashion trends, for example, so 80s fashion comes back in style now, you know, it's sort of it doesn't occupy a temporal space, it, it's fractured in some way because yes, it came from the past, but now we're experiencing it in the present, but our views are informed by the past, but how can it only belong to the past if it's existing in the present? Now, I know that that's a bit confusing, but hopefully I've explained myself okay with that one. We'll move on and we'll see how that's applied to music. So let's try and apply this concept of hauntology to music specifically. Uh, Mark Fisher, a brilliant cultural theorist whose work I absolutely recommend checking out. In fact, his book, Ghosts of My Life, 
um, writings on depression, hauntology, and lost futures is a lot of what I based this this video on today. And he's a, he's great. He's got a lot of stuff out, so you should really check some of his work out. But he took Derrida's concept of hauntology and specifically applied that within the confines of art. His approach to hauntology is that we are haunted by a future that never came to pass, a future that we were promised and we were working towards, but has been eliminated by things like late stage capitalism and postmodernism. And he calls that lost futures. See how this kind of works in relation to Vaporwave? We have a genre obsessed with the artifacts of a bygone era, a return to a temporal location where the possibilities for the future were maybe more positive, perhaps more naive. Fisher suggested that in other electronic artists that could be considered hauntological, so people like William Bozinski, Boards of Canada, burial, there is a juxtaposition of viewpoints here. Not only has the future not arrived, it no longer seems possible, yet at the same time the music constitutes a refusal to give up on the desire of the future. This refusal gives the melancholia a political dimension because it amounts to a failure to accommodate to the closed horizons of capitalist realism. That's where I think Vaporwave reveals itself. It's a style stuck in a perpetual loop, both the sound of Vaporwave, but also the political idealisms of it, uh, the temporal location of it. And the melancholia is there. I mean, it's there for all to see in those 80s and 90s synth sounds. And in utilizing these tropes, it exists in a weird state whereby musicians, producers, and audiences are almost lamenting the passing of something, experiencing a style and an aesthetic that's not based in either the past, the present, or even the future. With me? Okay, let's turn to number two. Is Vaporwave a meme? Let's look at the definitions of meme first. Meme, number one, an element of a culture or system of behavior passed from one individual to another by imitation or other non-genetic means. Number two, an image, video, piece of text, etc., typically humorous in nature that is copied and spread rapidly by internet users often with slight variations. See where I'm going with this? I've had plenty of conversations with many of you who have dismissed Vaporwave as a meme, and I think in many ways you're right. Vaporwave is a meme. It's a highly imitational form of music and art that's being endlessly repeated and can be endlessly created by anybody and can still fit and be legitimately considered part of that movement. I know we've all experienced the endless spamming of memes, you know, every social media platform you go on, whatever the meme of the day is, you can't get away from it, they just follow you around everywhere. And after seeing endless repetitions of anything, it becomes very difficult to see that original meaning coming through. I mean, at what point does the meaning just become separate? and the repetition is just for repetition's sake. You know, that's, that's so much part of the meme culture of the internet. Well, in the context of Vaporwave's music, if you go on Bandcamp or SoundCloud, you can find literally thousands of people making Vaporwave music and albums. They're utilizing the same sounds, the same aesthetics, the same cultural markers. It is the perpetual loop of the same ideas being used over and over again. In that way, the music can feel like a meme because you keep coming across repetitions of a very similar idea, and it almost feels like a self-serving in-joke online that only certain members of the online community can understand, much like a kind of visual meme. I think the interesting thing about Vaporwave is that unlike a lot of the other internet micro genres that have cropped up in the 2010s and the sort of late 2000s, you know, things like Sea Punk, Chillwave, Witch House, Vaporwave is the one that's endured, and I think that's because there are things about Vaporwave as an idea and as a movement that still suggest things about our present society and our state of culture. Even in meme form, if we're talking about specific visual Vaporwave memes, depending on how you look at it, they can address all sorts of interesting topics, I think. They can they talk about pretensions within the music community, the state of categorization and genres in music, like this one I'll put up here. I mean, that's clearly what that's doing. Um, the value of music as a commodity, and even satirical jabs at intellectualizing music, which I think is, again, the, the similar sort of thing. But I think you can see that coming out of them. And if you look at it in the right way, I think that's clear what a lot of this movement is pushing out in terms of ideas about music and culture. So yes, I think Vaporwave is a meme in many ways, but I don't think it's just a meme. I think that this concept of hauntology, along with the constant repetition of Vaporwave aesthetics, reveals a culture in flux, a culture grappling with what it means to connect with the past, what our present means, and almost what it means to fetishize an anachronistic aesthetic 
Jesus Christ, I'm never saying that word again after this video. And it's almost like the meme culture of Vaporwave perpetuates this intellectual argument because it's endlessly repeated ideas and notions floating around, endlessly being repeated and changed slightly, and there's no real temporal tether to any of these ideas. But what do you guys think? I'm sure there will be loads of people each side of the fence on this conversation and also sitting on the fence like I, I probably am. Can you see Vaporwave as hauntological, as emblematic of our desire for another future other than our own? Or is that a load of pretentious crap and is Vaporwave just internet culture trash? Or is it kind of both like I'm suggesting? Get your thoughts down in the comments section below. Let's get into this. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next week with five albums to get you into IDM. So look out for that one. See you soon.